You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's actually a great segue to Antoine's presentation. We're going to talk about uh, platforms a lot and uh, new generation wearables. Um, that's what Sensoria does, and the genesis of the company is really quite simple. Uh, three former Microsoft guys got together about four years ago, and we looked at the current wearable market, and we looked at it, and we, we, we thought it, looked, it, looks, it looks a lot like the early PC market, right, in the late 80s. You know? Things are clunky, less than powerful, they don't do things very well, uh, you know, most of them are really glorified pedometers, if you think about them. They're plasticky, and still, people buy them, right? They're igniting people's imagination, right? So we said, well, uh, we come from the Kinect world, the Xbox world, and the Health Vault world. Wouldn't it be nice to actually create a new generation of wearables that is transparent to the human eye and is embedded into whatever people wear every day? In order to do that, we, we left the company and we built a very small, of course, but very meaningful and multidisciplinary team. As Antoine said before, this is a five-step, he called five-step process, right? So coming from Microsoft, we didn't know much about signal processing. So we hired the applied physics professor from the University of Washington, right? So we didn't know much about textiles and materials engineering. So we, we bought and actually resourced materials from Cornell and MIT. But we also brought in people from K2 Sports. Uh, so it really is meaningful, but it's really hard to actually build a really elegant platform that is based on garments. So the vision of the company is that the garment is the next ultra personal computer. We want the electronics to disappear to the human eye. We want to leverage textile sensing and any other type of selfish sensing that we can use that is comfortable on the human skin. From a technology perspective, there are three things that are happening that are making it feasible. Uh, hard but feasible. <laughs> Number one, uh, e-textile yarn is uh, conductive and can replace computer components. Number two, textiles, woven or knitted, can now replace sensing technology. Now, are they as reliable as FSR and MEM sensor? Probably not, but they're also very comfortable, they're washable, and they're actually stretchable as well, right? So there are different physical characteristics of these sensors that can make, uh, make them appealing to what we do. Last but not least, and I'm not gonna spend any time on it, number three, uh, most of you in the audience here know very well microelectronics, chips, printed electronics, batteries. There is a fantastic trend that we can take advantage of where the electronics are becoming smaller and smaller and thanks to you know, the Apple, Samsungs of the world, the supply chain is pushing down prices. So a, a gyro or an accelerometer today costs a fraction of what it used to cost you know, three or four years ago and it's a fraction in size as well, right? So that, that type of trend is important to us, to make the garment the next, the next computer. There is a dichotomy in this industry, though. There is a, as I said at the beginning, a part of this industry which is the traditionally called wearable device IoT industry uh, that is, as I said, clunky and less than powerful, is comprised of multiple type of devices, uh, it's growing very fast, even through the, probably the worst recession in the U.S. economy through 2008, it has been growing at a healthy double digit against you know, any other sector in the economy. On the other extreme, you see the apparel industry, a uh, huge industry employing over 4.5 million people. It's a $1.2 trillion industry that is struggling to differentiate. Right? Uh, when you're in front of a buyer with a technical product, you know, a Nike product, Adidas product, Under Armour product, at the end of the day, they are very, very similar, and therefore the buyer starts asking, okay, what's the price? So the CAGR of this industry is only 4% year over year, not very appealing, not very sexy, and profitability is a major, major issue. So we're platform people. So think of us as the Goretex of wearables. That's what we aspire to become. Uh, there are three components of this platform that the, a multidisciplinary team needs to tackle in order to make it happen. Of course, all based on standards. The first part is the cloud system. Uh, people will want to actually own and access their data coming from multiple textile sensing devices. Textile and non-textile sensing devices as well. Electronics, we started from our Arduino and LilyPad and 
I can tell you it's a fantastic experience, but it takes way too long. So we need a higher level platform when it comes to embeddable electronics into garments that make it easier for sports and apparel brands to actually create their own experiences for consumers. And last but not least, of course, biometric sensors. And biometric sensors, I, I described them before, they're not exclusively textile. Uh, they need to be super small and meaningful, and they need to be easy to embed into, into this. Uh, so our goal is to actually work with the sports and apparel industry and enable consumer experiences powered by Sensoria, pretty much like an Intel Inside or Vortex or, or Windows, if you, if you can think about it. Uh, so in order to actually enable that type of scenario, we had to you know, eat our own dog food. That's the only way you do this. You know, in order to prove Windows, you need to build Excel. In order to prove iOS for, for Apple, you need to build great apps. If that's the only way you, you know whether you're building a platform or not, is building really meaningful experiences on it. So we created our own pressure textile sensor. It's the only, as far as I know, textile pressure sensor in the market. The only reason why we built it is because we couldn't find one that is washable. It's convenient enough that a, you know, a company like Decathlon or a large retail store could even afford to actually look at it. Uh, all the other textile sensing technology that we had sourced was very fancy nanotechnology material that after a couple of washes started behaving in an unpredictable way. For like a two-year-old, we cannot build electronics and software for something that is unpredictable. And very expensive, so we had to build one. We also sourced, and we keep sourcing, a traditional or non-traditional electronics and textile sensing. So we have access and uh, exclusivity rights for North, North America for an electrode uh, that comes from another company that we did not build that one. The point is, they all have to be very meaningful, very, tech, very thin, very comfortable, and really washable. Right? So that, those are the core characteristics when we actually look for this type of, of sensors. And again, easy to embed into a textile garment form factor. We've been in the market now for a, a year with uh, a sports bra uh, and uh, a t-shirt for fitness enthusiasts. You can see that the data that comes from our electrodes is comparable to an ECG, EKG level data uh, from a hospital level, hard to distinguish one from the other. And I agree, it's important to actually create deep, meaningful, reliable experiences on single data sets, right? All we do is heart rate monitoring. It's uncomfortable for women and for men to actually wear straps. Uh, we, as a platform, allow the user to use their Garmin or their Polar uh, HRM. One of the interesting standards in this place, is, uh, in this world, one of the few, is that the two uh, snaps that separate uh, the uh, HRM module are always 4.5 centimeters apart. It's not a fancy <laughs> standard, but it exists. So uh, very often we can actually leverage what the customer has already bought in the past. So we, we don't force the customer to buy our own electronics. If they already have it, they can just disconnect it from the strap and connect it to our Garmin. And then the coolest thing that we're doing, and I'm actually wearing one, instead of actually showing you a, another, yet another video here, here, here it is. You can actually download from the App Store the Sensoria application. You can connect a Polar, a Garmin, an Adidas, a Clothing Plus, T-shirt or a sports bra uh, or strap. You can connect a pair of sh socks with uh, textile sensing and you can go for a run. The cool thing about our sock is the fact that we, for the first time, generate data sets that have never been connect collected before, right? Uh, heart rate monitoring has been around for 60, 70 years. So people know what to do with them. With our socks, we collect data called GAIT. Doctors refer to GAIT as the sixth vital sign. Uh, it has been around since uh, the mid 1600s. The Germans and Italians defined the science of human locomotion in the, in the 1600s. But there is no real time, real life tool to detect how people walk. So the first application that we brought to market is a running application. 80% of the people that go running in the world get injured every single year. It's a medieval statistics. People still in 2014 don't know why, regardless of how expensive their shoes are. So our application allows them to detect impact forces, detect cadence, uh, detect uh, uh, um, uh, foot landing technique, and also compare shoes. It is comprised of a uh, sock that looks and feels like a normal sock. It has three pressure sensors, textile pressure sensors that are at the bottom at the plantar area. And then we collect data and drive data with a Bluetooth smart device, which is called the anklet, which magnetically attaches to the sock. Now, of course, we patented this type of uh, technology because we think there is a fantastic opportunity to actually 
connect, let's call them traditional, traditional flexible electronics, <laughs> to a non-traditional PCB like a textile. So the next level is really what matters the most. How do we actually create meaningful consumer experiences by combining multiple garments at the same time in real time? You can see that this runner here on, uh, the, uh, on, the, on the screen is combining heart rate monitoring capability and uh, foot landing technique capabilities in a single application. So you have, for the first time, multiple garments communicating in real time to the same mobile application. Uh, this is just the beginning, of course. We look forward to seeing the Apple Watch and Samsung Gear and Google Glass coming to market because all these new visualization devices will allow the user to consume more actionable information. We don't really care about the data. You know, if I go for a run and I'm off cadence and I'm heel striking too much, I don't want to wait until tonight to look at a pretty dashboard to know that my back hurts. At that point, my back hurts. I want to know that I need to change my style and my running form while I do it. So this type of new scenarios, the watches and the glasses, will allow people to consume actionable information, we call it virtual coach, in real time. And of course we do have a dashboard, but that's, that's after the fact. The cool thing is that textile sensing can now compete with traditional accelerometer data. So envision uh, a system that augments the accelerometer in the anklet with the textile pressure sensors that we have in the, in the SOC. But the signal that you see at the bottom is, uh, shows the fact that we can auto-detect what the person is doing, standing, walking, running on the spot, even without the accelerometer, right? So we have two ways to detect in an extremely precise way the activity. So now my steps are real steps. They're not inferred accelerometer-driven signal process by elderly patients in a skilled nursing facility where their, their stride length would not trigger any type of signal from a wrist or uh, wrist-based accelerometer, as you said, right? Uh, we can also, I do not want Thank you very much. I've seen that before. <laughs> uh, what you see here is actually what uh, the, the theory and the research behind the foot landing technique that we have embedded in our application. This is a, a research conducted by Professor Daniel Lieberman at Harvard a couple of years ago, uh, published by Journal of Nature. And he showed the fact that, first of all, 70% of people run in the wrong way. And number two, if you run off cadence and heel striking, you generate impact forces similar to being hit by a sledgehammer a thousand times a mile. That's why people get hurt. Right? It doesn't really matter what type of shoes they wear. And that was the genesis of the barefoot movement. Right? The barefoot movement was a grassroots movement that took the extreme step, saying, then we're not going to wear any shoes. We don't think that's the right approach. We think that what we, what we need to know is which shoes are right for us, and we're all different. So we empower the person and his trusted advisor, his coach, to select the shoes that they want to, 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 to wear by selecting in a shoe closet the shoes. We keep track of the miles, by the way. So if the shoe is over 250 miles, we provide an alert. And we show the person whether they heel strike or they go off cadence more with a pair of shoes versus an apple. So it's a quantified shoe comparison experience. The optimal cadence for distance runners is between 85 and 90. Most of us run at cadence that is much lower than that. Uh, and that's uh, based on different theories. There is a chi running theory that people may be familiar with as an example. Most people tend to agree that that's, that's the right approach. When you combine that with a heart rate monitor type of scenario, then you can select ranges as well. So uh, aerobic ranges, fat burning type of scenarios, and so forth become very meaningful in real time, thanks just to two garments that we would just wear anyway. We don't need to wear anything else but a pair of socks and a t-shirt or, or a sports bra. So we select uh, shoes from uh, a database of over, over 7,000 running shoes in the US, um, and uh, we compare those shoes, uh, and each pair of shoes is actually compared not, to the person, not just to the person wearing them, but to people that look like the person wearing them. So with basic machine learning cloud-based analytics, we can compare goals and type of running across multiple runners. There is a huge, huge opportunity there. Uh, the partnership opportunity that we provide at Sensoria is based on what we call the Sensoria Developer Kit. We're a small startup. We cannot do 
everything ourselves. So we thought, why don't we actually generate and create a platform approach? So we have about 50 developers right now building applications that span from golf to cycling, from a, a cross-country skiing to health and healthcare specific type of scenario like we have, and uh, fall detection and prevention. So if you're interested in, in, in those type of scenarios, uh, come and talk to me after the presentation. We'd love to, we'd love to talk to you. What matters is really reducing the complexity at the sensor level, at the electronics level, at the cloud-based level, so we can, we can build these meaningful experiences faster. Healthcare applications that you see here span, will span into even broader opportunities. Think about diabetic food complications, which are the number one cause of uh, re-hospitalization in this country. And with the legislation changing, there is, an effect, there is an opportunity to save limbs by just really replacing the pain sensation for a diabetic patient that has peripheral neuropathy, which means, in general, 70% of diabetic patients don't feel their feet normally. Uh, think about prosthetics and orthotics. And think about the opportunity of embedding this type of sensing technology into these, these devices as well. And again, and again, connect them to the same cloud, HIPAA compliant cloud, cloud system. Uh, the good news is that uh, we have been able to create and generate interest for this type of approach. We just uh, won and we're honored to be selected as uh, one of the Innovation Award honoree for 2015 by CS. So uh, we will be there. So if you're there at CS, we look forward to seeing you there. Great. Thanks a lot. <laughs>